Hi, welcome back to topic two, kinetics of particles. So for this topic, you can get it in your textbook beer for angular momentum at section 12.2 page 767 and for impulse momentum at your textbook page 858 section 13.3 so for today's class well, I'm going to discuss with you a difference between linear momentum and angular momentum so here first I'm going to introduce to you what is linear momentum and show you how Newton's second law can be expressed in the rate of change of momentum and then you will find uh, you're able to find what is the impulse uh, momentum and what is the angular momentum okay now to start as you can see I have made a table to separate linear and angular momentum so for the first example we're going to go through linear uh, linear example first so first of all assume you have a truck here with a mass M let's say and it is resting on a horizontal surface and it has an initial velocity of V naught now let's assume there is a magnitude force F applied to the truck okay now this will cause the truck to change momentum right Good. now momentum L refers to the mass times the velocity now let's uh, now so where MV here represent the linear momentum of the particle now let's change this momentum by some sort of force okay now force equals to m a okay now now we can consider uh, the particle of mass m is acted upon a force f now as you can see we can express this in using newton's second law okay so m a is a dv over dt so again you can express this uh, in terms of in terms of like this d over dt m b okay so it means it's the derivative of the mass times the velocity and this is what you call uh, the linear momentum okay now now let's assume we are multiplying both sides with uh, dt what you will get is f dt equals to dmv and then we integrate both sides you will get um, integration at a time t1 to t2 f dt equals to mv2 minus mv1 now this equation here what you see is actually known as linear impulse okay linear impulse where impulse equals to the integration of force at time t1 to t2 f dt okay which is also the same as mv2 minus mv1 so in a question sometimes when you have a uh, multiple forces acting on a particle so like say here this is our truck just now you have multiple forces acting on it you have forces due to um, due due to the friction of the surface you have the due to the weight you have a a force pushing on it you for example you have a cable pulling it uh, all those multiple forces you can end up solving the problem and coming up with an equation that you call principle of linear impulse momentum okay so that equation is m v2 plus impulse equals to m v1 okay 
So this equation here is what you call, okay, principle of impulse momentum. Principle of impulse momentum. Okay, so this is an important formula. Okay, that is explaining uh, linear momentum. Now we are going to go to our second example. Okay, now let's imagine we have Earth. Okay, this blue figure here is uh, Earth. And we have here a sun. Okay, now the Earth will have a velocity. Okay, let's say Earth has a velocity. Okay, and there is a distance r that separates the Earth and the Sun. So let's say we have a distance r. Okay, and we have a sense that Earth will rotate around the Sun due to gravity and somehow it will continue rotating. So let's say, oops. I say it rotates around the sun. Oops. Keep. Okay. Give me a second. Okay. Okay. All right now. There we go. Okay. Done. Now. However, as you can see, it does not go uh, in a straight line compared to the first example here, okay, where it moves in a straight line due to a force where it suddenly slows down, okay. Now, uh, the first example I'm talking about, okay. So, basically, uh, the Earth will keep rotating around and around and it will keep doing that until there is some kind of outside influence that stop it. So for this example, it is good to understand what is angular momentum. So angular momentum about a point O, so let's say we assume our sun is about a point O here, is hey, oops, is is H not equals to R, the radius, multiplied by MV. So O is representing a momentum about a point. Okay, and the radius uh, uh, is about a point of uh, the mass. And at this case, its point is zero. Okay, so now let's say uh, the momentum. Okay, momentum. Uh, angular momentum as representing the sun equals to the radius of the from the earth with respect to the sun multiply the mass of the earth and multiply by the velocity of the earth so this is what you call angular momentum so the change of angular momentum uh, can happen and when you have uh, and the change of angular momentum when it occurs it means um, uh, the change of angular momentum when it occurs it means that there is a moment or we can say uh, uh, or or a loss of torque for example so let's say uh, the change of angular momentum due to moment um, is also referred to what is moment? Moment is the uh, radius multiplied by the force. It means force multiplied by distance. Huh? The same thing. So we will be M equals to R multiplied by F. Okay. So in other words, now let's assume that the change momentum is due to a rocket that uh, is applying uh, incredible force at the back side of the earth. So here I am drawing you a rocket. So let's assume uh, we have a huge rocket here and it is uh, uh, 
this huge rocket is applying an incredible uh, force to the earth uh, to the back side of the earth so what it does is it is speeding up the earth and at the end results the velocity will increase so subsequently it changes the overall moment so when it does happen like that then this is the equation we will use it will be h2 minus h1 equals to the integration of the time t1 to t2 of the moment r multiplied by f t t so this is the important equation here that you need to get and understand okay all right so now i help you understand the difference between what is linear momentum and angular momentum and to just uh, wrap up a bit um let me give you a, sh uh, a simple understanding uh which is linear and for linear and angular so let's say we have a same um, a same situation here you have a car it is moving in a straight line so basically the linear mom the momentum here will be equal to the mass times velocity so this represent the linear momentum for this car now for another case that represent angular momentum let's say we have uh, again a car that is um, uh, now but the difference is the car is, is not moving in a straight line it is moving in circles so basically we want to calculate how much momentum it has going in circles so for for this example, we want to know how much momentum of the object has moving in a straight line. And for this example, we want to know how much momentum the car has moving, uh, going in circles. So I hope these two examples um, here that I have explained to you um, helps, uh, helps you to understand better on uh, what I've explained here earlier. Okay? All right, so now um, I hope you will stay tuned for, for the tutorials that I will share later. Okay, thank you.